Hello everyone, this is Pastor Doug, small groups pastor at the church next door, part of our leadership team. We are going through difficult times, as you know, and as a leadership team, we have made a decision that we believe best fits that time. So we have decided to pause our live worship services for this week. We are not going to meet at the church as we have been for the past several months, but instead we're gonna have some content for you online today. Now we are doing this out of an abundance of content caution, and also we are doing this out of faith. We know that as followers of Jesus Christ, we are to act out of faith rather than fear. But with numbers rising and people responding to the numbers and the holidays by beginning to, to separate, we decided that the most faith-filled thing to do would be to take a short pause in our live services. If we canceled all services completely, that would be anxiety. But also if we forced through services when the numbers seemed to suggest that wasn't the right thing to do, that would also be anxiety. So we decided it was faithful to say, Lord, we will submit to what you are doing in the world and we will agree to pause during uh, this time and have some online content. So that's what we have for you today. We're gonna have some worship. We're gonna have a quick message. We're also gonna have uh, our TV show on NBC4 at noon on Sunday. I encourage you to look at that. And our God Spots are out on YouTube. So we've got a, several ways for you to engage with us this weekend. And we will hope you do that as we all stay cautious and we all stay faithful and we separate for, for this weekend so that we can come back together soon. Oh my God. 
working It never stop, it never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working everybody, Pastor Doug again, and I just want to bring you a little message during our time, a message that's going along with our table messages that we have been enjoying ever since October. We are coming to the table of Thanksgiving this week. That's what our table message is uh, going to be, very fitting, because this is the weekend of the Thanksgiving holiday. I don't know about you, but I love Thanksgiving now but I didn't as a kid. I hated Thanksgiving as a kid. I thought Thanksgiving was just a road bump on the way to Christmas. Christmas was what I really wanted because that's where you got candy and toys and gifts and all that stuff. Thanksgiving was just a day uh, where we had food that I didn't like. I didn't like the Thanksgiving meal. I didn't like the Thanksgiving day. The days off of school were fine, but I really didn't care for Thanksgiving. It wasn't until I became an adult and I started to like, you know, roast turkey and green bean casserole and cranberry sauce and all the good things that we have. And I started to like football uh, as well. It wasn't until then that I really began to appreciate Thanksgiving. Beyond that, though, there came a time where it was no longer just the Thanksgiving holiday or the Thanksgiving meal. It was the Thanksgiving practice. I moved from not liking the meal or the day at all to loving the day for the meal and the football to loving the day because I love the practice. And that practice is a distinctly godly practice. The Thanksgiving holiday is distinctly American. We are the ones who created this. No other nation celebrates it at least the way that we do with the basis in 1621 and the pilgrims and the Native Americans and, uh, and the founding of our country. No, no other people celebrate the American Thanksgiving that way, but God's people have always celebrated the giving of thanks. They've always celebrated that Thanksgiving. We have a scripture we want to share with you which references one of many this is Psalm 56, 10 through 13. The psalmist says, In God, whose word I praise, in the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Notice that there. He's aware of who God is. He's aware of what God has done for him, and that leads him to give thanks to God. In fact, he not only thanked God the way that we do today by verbalizing it, saying, thank you, God, I'm thankful, thanksgiving, the terms that we use. He said he had a thank offering. There was something he was going to take to the altar in the temple in Jerusalem and sacrifice there uh, to the Lord as, as a sign, as an expression of his thankful. Ness. Now, we don't offer those kinds 
of sacrifices today, but that type of thanksgiving is still a part of the walk with God. It's still a, a quality of God's people. We've got a whole list here which shows you how the scriptures describe this quality and, and how they demonstrate that it is indeed a uh, constant quality of God's people. Scripture uh, defines uh, thanksgiving as being a spiritual sacrifice. That's Psalm 116, 17. Again, we don't bring physical sacrifices to a temple anymore the way that, that they did in, in the psalmist's time, but thanksgiving is described as a type of of sacrifice. I believe it's still received in the heavenly places on the heavenly altar in that way. It is described as a duty. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13. This is what, what I mean sometimes when I say that it is right to give thanks or we should give thanks. It's something we are supposed to do. Somebody does something for my daughter, I make her thank them because it is right. So there is a, a part to thanksgiving that is should that is ought. There is a part of thanksgiving that is a duty, but it is also unceasing. It never stops. Ephesians 1, uh, 16, Paul's writing to the uh, Ephesian Christians. Really, he's writing to a whole group of Christians because the Ephesian letter went through a bunch of churches, and he says, I thank God always for you. Something similar in Philippians 1, Three, we see that thanksgiving is spontaneous. There, Paul says to the Philippians, I thank my God every time I remember you. So they come across his mind, all of a sudden he's thankful. It spontaneously comes up in his life. We give thanks in Christ's name. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Uh, it is God's will for us to be thankful. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, you're probably familiar with this one. In everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will is for us to be thankful. Again, when I say that I want my daughter to give thanks because it is right, I also want my daughter just to be thankful. I don't want her to be told to give thanks all the time. I want her to experience thanks when people do something for her and then to express it. That's my will and that's God's will for us. I like this one best of all though, Thanksgiving is heaven's theme. We see this in Revelation 7, 12. Uh, in the NIV, we see this. It says, Revelation 7, 12, the heavenly hosts were saying, amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever, amen. That's the song these heavenly creatures and the angels in heaven and earth were singing to God in the heavenly places and thanks was a part of that. So thanks, thanksgiving, thankfulness, that is heaven's theme. That is the theme of a heavenly existence. All of God's creatures from the angel to the animal with humans there in between, all of them are thankful all the time for who God is and what he has done for them. Well, seeing that this is a part of the, uh, the Christian character, uh, always been a part of godly people, always been a part of the walk with God, the, the natural question is, uh, how can I be thankful like this? How can I do it as I should? How can I do it as I ought? How can I do it unceasingly? How can I do it spontaneously? How can I do it naturally? How can I do it just because I feel it? Well, we've got a couple ideas for you here. One is that we do it in prayer. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. I've always believed Paul was saying there, every time you pray, thanksgiving ought to be a part of it. So we pray, part of our prayers is God, we're thankful. Thank you for this. Thank you in general. Could be specific prayer, could be uh, a vague uh, thank thankfulness, but we are thankful every time we pray. There's a thankfulness for food. We see Jesus praying before we, he ate. I know that's become a custom to some of us. I find it hard to eat without doing that. But with Jesus, it was genuine. It's not just that he did it because it was a tradition. It's that he did it because he knew that his food came from God and he was thankful. There's thankfulness for the Lord's healing. In Luke 17, Jesus uh, heals a leper. The guy was a Samaritan. All the others, uh, there was nine others and they didn't come back for some reason, but this one came back. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Has Jesus healed you? Many of us have experienced healing of some kind. What has Jesus spared you from that could have happened to you that didn't? We're thankful for the healing of our body and for the protection of our body. Thankfulness in advance for answered prayer. When Jesus was about to raise Lazarus, he said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. God hadn't done it yet. The miracle hadn't happened, but Jesus knew it would. He knew God would be good and he thanked him in advance. Thankfulness 
for Christian brothers and sisters. In Acts 28, Paul's coming off of his arduous trip to Rome on a prison ship. And when he arrives there, he's still, I believe, 150 miles away. Some brothers and sisters heard that we were coming, Luke says, and they met Paul at the Forum of Appius and the Three Taverns. And at the sight of those people, Paul thanked God. Now, here's an interesting thing. This was part of my devotion last night. Just happened to come up in my devotional reading last night. So the Lord's really letting me know there's something valuable for us here. I just love it that Paul had gone through this difficulty and then he didn't know how the Romans would receive him. And then he sees they travel 150 miles to see him and he thanked God. Are you thankful for your Christian brothers and sisters when you go to small group, when you go to uh, worship services? There's thankfulness for the Lord's spiritual gifts and ministries. Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. So Paul spoke in tongues and he was thankful for it. 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 18. There's a thankfulness for transformed lives. In 1 Thessalonians 1, uh, Paul says, we always thank God for all of you. We remember before our God and Father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope. And our Lord Jesus Christ, we're thankful to you Thessalonians because you have truly become followers of Jesus. And then lastly, we just have thankfulness for everything. Ephesians 5.20 says, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. There's always something to be thankful for. You know, sometimes this is easy and you just feel thankful. Sometimes it's difficult. I, I remember one time I was doing devotions and I end my devotions sometimes with a song and I listened to uh, Andre Crouch's Through It All. And he says, I thank God for my mountains and I thank God for my valleys. And the spirit told me at that time, you need to do that. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm not thankful for those things. But I did. I obeyed and it was a blessing. So sometimes we feel thankful, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we do it because it's a duty. Sometimes we do it because it just naturally comes out of us. But thankfulness is a part of the Christian life. It's a part of the walk with God, part of following Jesus, always been a part of God's people. We have enjoyed it this weekend with family and friends uh, at this meal. We continue to enjoy it every day as we look at our God, who he is, what he's done for us. Now we're gonna have one more song, one more opportunity to be thankful together before we depart and are thankful on our own. Before I let you loose for this, uh, this last worship song, though, I do wanna remind you, if we've never made a connection, we'd love to hear from you. If you text CONNECT to 614-412-2144, that'll get that ball rolling. NBC4 tomorrow, uh, Sunday at noon. There will be our Growing Closer to God show. So that's another opportunity to receive input from the Lord. So Sunday noon on NBC4. And uh, lastly, our God spots are on YouTube. If you'd like one, just text me and I'll send it to you. It's another way to get input as well. For now though, know that we love you and that we are praying for you. And why don't you worship with us one more time as we sing this final song.
You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down We hope you are encouraged and challenged to grow in your relationship with Jesus by this message. If you'd like to learn more about The Church Next Door, stop by our website at thechurchnextdoor.org or look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.